Hi everyone, it's Marianne, and for today's video, I'm sharing with you my entire philodendron collection. Thank you so much for joining me today. And it is very surprising to me that philodendron now makes up the most of my plant collection. And I am someone who was never really in the bandwagon of philodendrons, especially during its height of popularity. And it's not just me trying to be that girl, but I just wasn't really interested in philodendrons. Like I don't hate them, but they weren't really attractive to me as a plant genus or a plant variety at all. At most, I had philodendron hitterseum as part of my pothos plant collection. And if you've known me, you probably know me as the pothos girl. I love my pothos plants. And it is surprising to me that right now that my philodendron plants currently outnumber my Apropetum and Syndapsis plants that are part of my Pothos collection. But what's interesting about my current philodendron collection is philodendron hydrosane plants that I considered as Pothos-like or Pothos are not even part of my current plant collection anymore. So if you're interested to see what type of philodendrons I currently do have in my plant collection and if you're a beginner when it comes to philodendron like myself I can share with you the types of philodendrons that really worked out for me and didn't and why I chose to keep this philodendrons in my plant collection as opposed to the other philodendrons that I had in my plant collection and as a philodendron beginner you might have some ideas on which philodendron to pick out next during your next plant shopping trip but before we get started, if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Marian. Welcome to My Ways This Life, where I take you along my plant and sustainable lifestyle journey and share with you some of my tips and tricks along the way. I also share personal and travel vlogs here and there. So if that type of content interests you, make sure to subscribe to my channel before the end of this video and make sure to like and comment down below. I would love to hear from you. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Going through the order of my plants from the oldest to the newest philodendron plant that I have added to my plant collection and going to be mentioning here and there philodendron plants that I previously had in my collection that I either gave up or didn't really work out for me. So you kind of like have an idea what philodendron works really well for beginners or not. So the very first one that I'm going to mention is technically not classified as a philodendron anymore but it is the philodendron hope or the philodendron lickety split also known as the split leaf philodendron and i love this plant because this plant is not only my oldest philodendron in my collection it is one of my oldest plant overall and i got this very early in my plant journey and i love it because it is a huge statement plant you do need to have some space for it i currently have it outside Every summer or every growing season, I do take it outside so that it has like space to grow its huge, beautiful leaves. It does give you the jungle vibe pretty quickly. And come the colder season, when I have to bring it back in, what I do is I prune off most of the leaves and probably just leave like two or three. And it stays that way during the winter so it doesn't occupy too much space indoors. But it's fine that way and come next growing season, it grows vigorously again. So I'm not scared of pruning it every time the cold season comes and I have to bring it back in. For me, it is a much easier care than a Monstera Deliciosa because I never really have to worry about giving it a pole or making it stable as it grows. And I had this plant for like four years now. So like I said, I just prune it when time is needed to and then it grows back vigorously again. So it's a plant that I highly recommend if you want a big statement plant that is very much easy care and very much beginner friendly. The next philodendron in my collection is the philodendron brantianum. And I must admit that the first two times that I had the philodendron brantianum, it didn't really work out for me. I just could never get it to grow big or it just like died out on me. And the last philodendron brantianum I had before the one that I currently have, I just gave away to a friend. But in a plant swap that I went to, I got a couple more cuttings of it that's a bit more mature. So when I got those cuttings, I was kind of like, you know what? Let's take a third shot at it, maybe third time is a charm. And sure enough, it is. And as you can see, it's already outgrowing its current pole. I'm about to extend it. And the leaves have also started to grow big. And what I also learned about the philodendron brantianum, because at first I was trying to treat it like a philodendron hederaceum, 
which they aren't and they don't really behave the same way as the philodendron heterosseum. As much as other people have success with it as a trailing house plant, for me, what I have observed with this plant is it wants to climb, it doesn't want to trail. So for a philodendron brentianum, I think it's almost a must to give it something to climb on if you want it to grow really, really well. And for the third one, once I propagated it, I immediately gave it a plant pole to climb on and it's growing the way that I want it to. So I'm really happy with this philodendron brentianum. I'm glad I took a third shot at it. And what's great about the philodendron brentianum, it is also becoming more common and more accessible and more affordable. So if you want to try out a climbing philodendron and you don't want to invest in the more expensive ones like the mame or the sorderoi or any philodendron that have that silver variegation on it, I suggest trying out the philodendron brentianum first if you haven't yet. See how it does for you as a climbing house plant and I think you would love it. And I think it's a good beginner climbing philodendron plant and see how well you do with it before you invest your time, money, and resources into the more expensive climbing philodendrons. The next philodendron in my plant collection is a philodendron that used to be so popular, very expensive, almost as expensive as a monstera albo, but now that it's being mass produced again, it has become a lot more affordable. And I'm talking about none other than the Pink Princess Philodendron. So even during its height of popularity, I was never really a Pink Princess Philodendron girly. Like I wasn't really into it. As much as I love pink plants, I think there are other pink plants out there that are prettier and more accessible and cheaper and easier to care for than the Pink Princess Philodendron. But in a plant trade last year, I was also able to get a Pink Princess Philodendron. And this is just before it started to become mass produced. So I still kind of like got it when it's still like a very much quote unquote rare or coveted plant. But now it's mass produced. You could find it at garden centers, at grocery stores. But the caveat with the ones that are being mass produced is that their variegation is really not that high. And even with the one that I got in a plant swap, the variegation is not that high, but honestly still a lot higher than what I currently see in the market right now, at least in the mass produced market. And that's the thing with the Pink Princess Philodendron that I find is that if you're really into pink plants, unless you get a Pink Princess Philodendron that has super high variegation, and I believe those highly variegated Pink Princess Philodendrons still pack up a price, maybe not as much as before, but they're still quite pricey, then I don't think having a Pink Princess Philodendron is worth spending your money on. If you can get it through a trade, then by all means, but spending a lot of money on it, especially nowadays, I don't think it's worth it even for a highly variegated one because I've seen other people do find a highly variegated Pink Princess Philodendron plant at their local nurseries for a fraction of a price. So I don't think it's something worth spending a lot of money on now even for a highly variegated one. And as mentioned, if you're just into pink plants, there are so many other pink plants in the market that are cheaper, more accessible, and easier care than the Pink Princess Philodendron. The one I currently have, for me, honestly, while it had some variegation when I first got it, most of the leaves it has produced didn't have any variegation. Lately, at least with the last couple of leaves, it started to produce more variegation, and I actually cut out the other leaves that didn't have any variegation. Because another problem that I ran into with the Pink Princess Philodendron is the leaves burn quite easily. So I had it outside and it just didn't do well being under the sun or even being in the shade, it just burns very quickly. So that's one thing with the Pink Princess Philodendron too, because we're always told that if you want higher variegation, you want to give it more light. But in my experience with the Pink Princess Philodendron, the more light I give it, it just suffers from leaf burn instead of producing more variegation. But like I said, if you can find one that is highly variegated or variegated enough for a fraction of price, I think the Pink Princess Philodendron is a plant worth having as long as you don't spend a lot of money on it. <laughs> So the next plant in my philodendron collection is probably the philodendron that I spent most money on and a plant that I spent the most money on overall. Well, not the most, but like one of my more expensive plants, which is the philodendron El Choco Red. So when philodendron varieties were trending last year, El Choco Red was the only one that really stood out for me and the one that I really wanted. And Equigenera had a pop-up in Maryland in Plants Alive and they had some El Choco Reds. So I decided to get one and I did get the smallest and cheapest one, which is for $65. And admittedly, when I got it, it was a beautiful plant. I was kind of like, this was worth buying. But 
even though I got it from a pop-up, it was still an imported plant and it still need to be acclimated. And sadly, it didn't really acclimate well. I lost all the beautiful leaves it had and I was reduced to nodes. And luckily I was able to get about four nodes out of it. The three I end up selling, one I cap, and now it has produced baby leaves and it looks like this now. And I recently repotted it. What is curious about this plant is it's pushing out leaves, but it doesn't have much root growth. I was hoping by this time it would have a lot of root growth. I don't know if I lost most of the roots during the repotting. I didn't think so or else I would have noticed it, but I just saw like it didn't really have much roots, but for some reason it is shooting out a lot of new growth, which I just hope it continues to do so and produce more roots eventually because I do want to keep this plant. I do like it. I still love it. I still think it was worth getting from Equigenera, although now I would probably just buy it if I was ever going to buy it again in an Equigenera sale where I could get it for like a lot cheaper than getting it from a pop-up because that's the thing about Equigenera pop-ups. They sell the plants a lot more expensive or at full price in the pop-up as opposed to if you buy it from their website where they always have sales and discounts. So that's a tip for you if you want to get a full dendron El Chaco Red from Equigenera or any of their philodendrons. Just wait until they have a sale on their website and if you want to save on shipping, if they do have an upcoming pop-up in your area, you can just pick up your orders at their pop-ups and grab some more plants while you're there. The next philodendron in my collection, which is my current favorite, is the philodendron varicosum. And this is surprising because philodendrons never really appeal to me in general, but even more so the philodendron varicosum. It was never one of my choice if I were ever going to get a philodendron for myself. But I did get the philodendron varicosum in a plant swap at the same time that I got the Chocha Red from the Echogenera pop-up at Plants Alive. They were also having a plant swap happening at the same time. So I actually didn't even trade anything for it. Someone was just giving it away because Vercosum wasn't really working out for her, so she was giving away cuttings from her plants. And the cuttings weren't actually at their best. But since, you know, it's free, why not take a shot at it? If it works out, then great. If not, no harm done. I got it for free. But surprisingly, in my case, the Vercosum worked out pretty well for me. I didn't really have to do much to it. Once I brought it home, I just put it in a sphagnum moss in a nursery pot and let it be and it started growing. It started to grow roots, it started to grow leaves, and now look at it. It has grown so much. It actually recently extended the pole, and at the beginning of the year, when I had to move, I sold the top cutting of it, and after that, it produced two new growth points. So now there's like two new branches or stems of the philodendron varicosum. I'm waiting for the plant to root itself on the extension pole, and once it does that, I'm going to like separate it from the first pole and hopefully that one would also produce more leaves because as you can see, it is quite bare at the bottom. So I kind of like want to make sure it grows new leaves and maybe I could trade that out as well. Give it away, sell it, we'll see. But for me, so far, I had really great luck with the varicosum, even though people said the varicosum is not a beginner-friendly philodendron. They don't recommend it to beginners. But somehow, I lucked out with it, so I'm really happy with it. Although, as you can see, there's some cosmetic damage from leaf burn, because again, I was keeping it in the backyard where it was getting full sun, but now I have it in the shade. So hopefully, the leaf burns are not gonna happen anymore, and it grows bigger and better leaves. And the next one that I'm gonna mention is one of my most recent addition to my plant collection, not just to my philodendron collection, which is the White Princess. Now, don't ask me what is the difference between the White Knight, White Princess, and the White Wizard, because I really can't tell you. I previously had a White Wizard. I bought it from a local plant shop, and it was, relatively affordable especially during the time when it still wasn't i think i paid 25 dollars for it 30 dollars and it had variegation as a juvenile white wizard but as it grows for me it didn't really produce any leaf that has variegation it was just green even though you could see the variegation on the stem so what ended up happening with that plant is i either sold or gave it away early this year before my move and during in the most recent plant swap that I went to, someone just put one on the free table. At first he was like trying to sell it, but even then he was only selling it for like $15. 
and I was already contemplating on whether to buy it from him but then he put it on the free table so I was kind of like are you sure that you're just giving this away and he said yes so I took it and I did buy something else from him because I felt bad not just giving him any money because initially he was selling it so now I have a white princess and I got it technically for free so I'm really excited about this one and compared to the white wizard it is a more established plant it has a lot more variegation and even now in my care it has started to produce two new leaves i'm actually surprised it has two new grow points and they are variegated so this one has a better variegation than the white wizard that i previously got so i'm really happy with this plant i think i'm gonna like it a lot more than the pink princess even though my pink princess has started to produce a lot more variegation as well but we will see it's going to be a competition between the pink princess and the white princess see which grows better for me and you know me, I like to downsize my plant collection, even though my plant collection right now is at its smallest. But if I have to make a choice between the pink princess and the white princess, the white princess is kind of winning right now, but we'll see if the pink princess eventually catches up. The last philodendron in my plant collection technically isn't a plant yet. It's still very much a propagation, which is the philodendron gigas or gigas, however you pronounce it. I got this off the plant swap that I went to as well from Plants Alive and this one I traded it for the Silver Hero and Silver Lady cuttings that I brought with me and she gave me a couple of cuttings and again kind of like with the Varicosum I wasn't really a big fan of the Gigas but I was getting it for free so why not and I did have similar looking Philodendrons before like I had the Philodendron Splendid which I also ended up selling at the beginning of the year when I was moving because I already had a chalk red and they all kind of look similar. So I was kind of like, do I really want the Splendid now that I have the chalk red? So I just ended up selling the Splendid and now with the Gigas, it also looks very much like the Splendid. Although they say the Gigas is a lot more finicky than the Splendid. The Splendid was supposed to be a lot easier to care because it's a hybrid between the Majestic, I believe and the varicosum and usually hybrids are easier care at least that's what they say i don't know maybe i heard the rumor wrong but the gigas is supposed to be like a little bit harder to care for but with the cuttings that i got one is rooted one is not but the one that isn't already has a new growth in it and even the rooted one also have a new growth in it so i'm excited to see what happens with it maybe it would turn out just like the varicosum and i will fall in love with it and i'll keep it or maybe it will become an established plant and I can trade it for something else that I want in my plant collection. We will see, but I am rooting for that plant. I do want it to succeed just like my other philodendrons that I initially got, didn't even really want. Now they are my favorites in my plant collection, not just in my philodendron collection. So those are all the philodendrons that I currently have in my plant collection and I only have like a seven of them but like I said in a plant collection that's only about 40-ish plants seven is a lot to have from one genus so I'm really surprised and as mentioned earlier it is now even larger than my epipenum collection and my Syndapsis collection, which I'll have upcoming videos on. So watch out for those. I do these videos every summer. I always do a dedicated video on my pothos and pothos-like plants, my Epipenum, Syndapsis, and Philodendron. But I started with the Philodendron first because as mentioned earlier, I don't really have any more Philodendron header same plants in my plant collection. Although technically I still have two kind of like lingering around, but I don't consider them as part of my collection anymore which is the Philodendron Brazil and the Hartley Philodendron. For me, my interest in Philodendron Hedrosaeum has just taken a nose dive, but my interest in other types of Philodendrons, like the climbing ones and the bushy type ones, has increased dramatically. So I don't really have Philodendron Hedrosaeum plants anymore in my plant collection. As mentioned, I have like the Brazil and the Hartley Philodendron lingering, but I don't consider them mine anymore. And I previously also had the Philodendron Lime, which it's a great plant, but for me, if I'm going to have a trailing house plant that is kind of like a pothos or pothos-like, I prefer the epipenum versions. Like, I love the neon pothos more. I like the golden pothos more compared to the Brazil. I definitely love the manjula and the marble queen pothos more compared to like the same type of philodendron heterosaeum plants. Even though I think the albo variegated philodendron heterosaeum is still much a coveted plant, 
that is a plant that I wasn't really interested in getting, especially since I have the Epipenum versions of those plants that I still prefer, and you will see in my Epipenum video, the ones that I'm talking about. But with the Philodendron Hydrosaeum, I also had the Philodendron Cream Splash, which for me as a plant parent was my biggest accomplishment, at least one of them, because I started with that with a single node and it grew into a four inch full plant. So I'm really proud of that. And, but I did end up selling it at the beginning of the year as well before my move, just cause I didn't really want it to be part of my plant collection anymore. So I sold it. But I think philodendron hydrosaeums in general are great for beginners, especially if you're just starting to dip your toes in philodendrons overall. The heterosaeums are easy to start with. I also had the philodendron mykins if you want something that's a little bit more not like a pothos. Those, that one is also a great plant to start with. It has also become a lot more affordable, a lot more accessible. But for me, the reason that I gave up my mykins is it would do well and then once it grows a bit, it would like start to not do well. So I would propagate it and that propagation would start to do well and then it would start to decline. So it was just a never ending cycle and I tried putting it in a pole, I tried it trailing. And in the end, I also just ended up selling my mykins and didn't keep it as part of my philodendron or plant collection overall. But again, those plants are great to start with if you're a beginner, but if you kind of like want to move up when it comes to the philodendrons, then the ones that I currently have in my collection, I do highly recommend. And I think you would love them as much as I do. But yeah, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, please do subscribe. I come up with videos every week. And if you haven't yet, check out these videos up here until my next one. But until then, I see you. I appreciate you. Take care of yourself and each other. And have a beautiful day. Bye.